The fight for life can be selfish or selfless. Which side of the battle line are you on? I will live and not die. That's the topic for today. I marvel at the enormous lust for life among our people, even in the midst of crushing pressures. Is this not why we've earned the reputation for being hustlers? Whereas in time past, the song of some in the midst of life's oppression had been, swing low, sweet chariot, coming forth to carry me home. Whereas faced with similar or worse challenges, our people declare like the violent who take it by force, I shall live and not die. No weapon fashioned against us or against me shall prosper. Yet, is it not possible that this, our desperation to survive at all costs, has indeed cost us the dignity that makes life worth living? So, I ask, is it ever a do or die affair? The trending news and fears associated with coronavirus begins to expose this, as did Ebola some years back, whereby some people were said to have died from panic, some resorting to drinking and bathing in salt water in a desperation to save their lives, than were killed by Ebola infection. Is it this lust for life that often makes us put self first and cut corners in the race to live because we have accepted the lie that it is do or die? We complain and point the finger at government, and yet four fingers pointing back at us brings to mind the times we've given an accepted bribe, cheated in exams, taken money for work we did not do, inflated the price of goods or services, made promises we failed to keep. Now, that's a popular one. Look the other way rather than challenge wrongdoing all in the bid to uphold our personal anthem of I will live and not die. I being at the center of that statement, never mind anyone else. Yet we say, this na I no go go and key myself. Exactly why any talk of revolution is destined to be dead on arrival. It's high time we were prepared to suffer loss rather than sacrifice our honor. Suffer loss rather than sacrifice our fellow man. Suffer loss rather than renege on our word. Essentially what I'm advocating for is a nation of people who live to uphold the honor of their word, the dignity of their fellow man, and stand up for what they believe in. By so doing, we would be truly living. I rest my case. Um, like, um, I think one of um, our viewers said, is your debate, that, you know, you, these things are intentionally orchestrated. They say a hungry man is an angry man. But here, what a hungry man does is to look for food from the next available means of getting that food, even if it means stealing it from his neighbor. Nobody is, you know, giving you any form of orientation of self worth That look, you are, you live and not die. We owe you this responsibility. You owe your, us. Your life this. is valuable. Your life is valuable. And, and so it means nothing to anybody. And so what we all basically are doing now is living that societal life. Where to your tent, O Israel? How far I can survive on depends own. on me. Mm. I, I don't want to bother myself about anything. Unlike the communal life that we're used to, where everybody takes care mm, of everybody. Mm. You know, until we return, I agree with you that until we return to those values of, look, we must stand up for that thing that is right and condemn what is wrong, we will not get anywhere. Look at what is happening in the political space. The president will do something that is that we couldn't take from our government in the last dispensation, but because you know he's from our part or he's uh, he has appointed one of our brother, we could swallow hook, line, and sinker all of those things. We won't condemn them, only to wait maybe to condemn some other person. So, and so, for me, we need to rise up above all of those sentiments and begin to take those steps that will help us correct whatever situation we are in. You know what, Ekene, religion is the opium of the people. And what I think um, worship centers have done in Nigeria is to step into the gap where we have failure of leadership. The people need hope. They need to know that they, in, in the midst of all this chaos and despondency, they will not die, that they will survive. So you find people repeating that all the time, you know, to be able to survive, not just the traffic, the policies that the are not implemented, the injustices, you know, people have to survive on something. And which is why, again, religion is being piped back to us as... as a sedative. A, not just a sedative, like, what is it called? Nasham. 
Yeah, that's it's, true. It's, another five, another five. My brother. <laughs> Preach on, sister. I, 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 Preach on, sister. You're really but talking. has she finished? Have you finished your point? You I was waiting. I was just... <laughs> you, you Preach on, sister. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, both of you have said things that are very correct, but there's another angle I want us to look at, which is just right on, the right basic on. social angle of just being kind to one another and not just surviving, mm -hmm. which is a problem that I think both the institution and religion is in a way making worse mm. because we've grown into a community where we're hypocrites, where we want to do yes. what is right outside. So I'm a Christian, I don't sin. I'm a Christ, I'm, um, I'm from this so, tradition, yeah. I don't do this, I don't do that. But you do it at the detriment of being wicked to your neighbor. Mm. So for example, he doesn't share we your, use the excuse the that because you don't lost. come from my tradition or you are not a Christian, I cannot relate with you even at your time of need. <laughs> mm. I can't just be kind to you simply because you are a Muslim. I don't mix with this sort. But mm. even your religion, most religions say you should go and convert people. Mm. How can you convert people when you're not kind to them, when they cannot find humanity in you? Know, you? Yeah. you know. Which is another thing, another angle we need to look at it. We mm. should stop trying to survive based on tribe, race, or religion, but just try to survive That's based human, on being humanity. human beings Humankind. and showing compassion to one person. And if that person can learn compassion from your example, might be able to move it on to another, another person. And we all don't need to try yeah. and survive Which because we're each other's brother's keeper. Which is what our leaders do keeper. very well. Yeah. As in among but, themselves? Yes, among the themselves. They They're do it community. very well. <laughs> but they will not want their followers to do it because right. if they, the followers start doing Unite. it, they are liberated, mm -hmm. they are united. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that's why Ribadu's son is getting married you see all of them across party, across religion, across, you know, uh, culture. They all converge and they laugh. They throw banters. But meanwhile, if among the, those photographs, you see the common man who is hungry, who is able to buy two naira data. He's quarreling on, oh, why will Oshiba job be laughing with right, uh, Atiku? Right, right. Can you imagine uh, that? You know, until we understand it also from that point of view. I like that, your, your yeah. point. Because until actually, we'll understand you, 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 it, will be united and, and, and condemn what it's but condemnable. But can the followership be ever yeah, but, united but quickly, but quickly, I, I doubt. But quickly, religion, be, for the fact that they make so much money from disunited Nigeria and fear, they will not also allow it. Religion comes in to tell you, oh, now we're talking about coronavirus. Some people are already selling olive oil. Some churches are already selling olive oil. And the, the only way religions thrive in Nigeria is to create fear around right. you, mm. and then they give a narrow opening that leads you to them. Right. And, and, and so with those fear, we are uh, 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 closed in our cocoon, and then you don't want to relate with that to your neighbor because he's oh, a Muslim. My pastor said that as a Muslim. You see that my pastor said is fear. all over the place. Ah, like, nah. What do you say? <laughs> do you not have a voice? Well, again, I, I, sorry, I was just oh. going to quickly say, you know, there is true religion and then there's, there's the fake one. And a lot of times people will still use whatever format you put on the ground to serve themselves. So what you're really looking for is like, those things that are obvious to you, like he said, loving your, your fellow man. Like, I'll yes, just give a quick illustration. Yeah. I'm driving in traffic, yeah. everybody's hustling, and then I, I slow down and let people in. You know they're surprised. They're not expecting it. They're thinking I'm going to hustle for that little gap. And when I stop and I say go in, the man is relieved. Uh, you know, it's, it's a change, okay, of, I'm not it's a change of tempo. My younger brother said he was going for a church program, and what was humility was the topic the for this, mm. the team. And then... While it's in traffic, there was this man who was busy. He, in fact, he was driving roughly. And, you know, like, oh, what was he? who is he? Who is he? Well, only for them to get to the church. <laughs> I know. And the, the speaker, speaker. <laughs> is this same man. Oh, and he's like, ah, what would this There's man not, teach me about humility? Right. He went away. Yeah, of course. I, I, I need to throw this in. Religion is not just only Christianity. Mm. I need mm. to throw that in. Yeah, because mm. he brought People in People worshipping, yes, if I... Yeah. Yes, yeah. Muslims. You can be right? critical yeah. about... Yeah. As long as you're not using your religion to discriminate yeah. on mm. another human another being, I think we'll all be better. Half of our wars will be over. I think what it is is that power has gone is now held firmly in the hands of very, very few people mm. and very, very bad people. Mm. Yeah. So there's very little. That's why we just want to survive. We feel powerless. And until you can prove that we're not powerless. I mean, if I'm powerless in a situation, truly, why would I waste my energy when I know I'm not up to the fight? I'll look for other ways. Nigerians are looking for other ways to survive. Yeah, I, I was arguing because that our, 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 true strength yeah, is, true. our true strength is to choose to do the right thing, even in the midst of. That's, that's where the true, true strength and life lies. The fact that you oppress me, and yes, I can still show kindness to my fellow man, that for me is where true strength lies. 
Uh, well, in the meantime, you have to survive. Ekene certainly has a lot of fight in her. You could say she's a female crusader of a more equal society. I know, I certainly am. And um, I'll tell you more after the break. <laughs>